Hey guys, this is Mike the Gaming Dad here and welcome back to the channel. Last time out we covered off who the best races are in Skyrim. Now that we have selected our chosen race, in this video I will show you my best start guide which will cover off the first 3 or so hours in game. This isn't specific to any one playstyle, instead in this video I will show you how to level some skills to 100 quickly, where some of the best early game weapons and spells are, how to make money quickly in Skyrim including what loot to pick up and what to leave, where some early game secrets are and what locations I recommend visiting early on. The first decision you will have is whether to follow Ralph the Stormcloak, who you were imprisoned with, or Hadvar the Imperial. I always recommend going with Ralph through this gate here, because who you choose determines the enemies you face, and the Imperials carry the better loot. Once we come through this door you will find the body of one of Ralph's Stormcloak companions. He'll cut your bindings off and you'll be able to take the dead Stormcloak's arm and axe. Have a few practice swings, on Ralph if you want to, he takes it pretty well to be fair. Then your first encounter is with the Imperial Captain who wanted to chop your head off despite your name not being on the list. Not cool. Make them pay and then loot their bodies. Now when looting, especially early on, value to weight ratio is key. What do I mean by this? See this Imperial Sword weighs 10 but is worth 23. We aren't going to pick this up because this is a poor ratio. The dagger and the armour though has a much better value to weight ratio so we'll collect all this. Trust me you won't be able to carry everything so you may as well get as much stuff to sell for coin as you can. Now's the first opportunity to level up a skill. After collecting the key, don't unlock the gate. Instead, hit Raloff. He won't fight back and he can't die and it is possible this early on to level one handed all the way to 100. If you do raw dog it all the way, I commend you. It does take a while, but it is possible to do it. Now that you've taken more than a few chunks out to pour Raloff, head downstairs and you'll find some potions. The first couple are on these cabinets here. There are also a few inside this barrel over here, and finally one more on this table along with some salt which we will also take. You never know when you need a bit of seasoning. Going through this door will lead you to another encounter with some soldiers. Dispose of them and loot their bodies for the armour and then make sure you unlock this cage here as it contains some gold, a potion, a spell book and this dead mage. This is the first lot of mage robes you will find. Great if you are playing as a mage character, but even if you aren't, look at this value to weight ratio. Pick this up as you can either sell it or disenchant it later on. There's one more lock that's worth unpicking just through the door to the right. Inside you'll find this skeleton and a small amount of gold which is worth picking up. Now if you head down this corridor, just to the left here, there's another skeleton that will have some gold inside, so it's worthwhile kitting that as well. And then finally there's a third skeleton here. It's really worthwhile picking up all the gold you can early on. Now when you head through this break in the wall, immediately turn left and left again and go back on yourself. Up here you'll find another skeleton, a potion, and another coin purse that's worth picking up. Now a little further along inside these caves you'll have your first encounter with the spiders. Practice your archery on those, you might get a few sneak attacks in. When you've killed them all, make sure you pick up the frostbite venom as well from them. Even if you're not going to use it, it's worthwhile picking it up because you can always sell it. And then also inside these egg sacks, you'll find some spider eggs. We're also going to pick these up because we'll do a bit of crafting later as well. It's worthwhile doing the crafting because the potions you can sell for gold. Now through the next passageway, you'll find this cart here, which has got a gold purse in it. Make sure you pick this up as well. Now at this point, you should have leveled up enough skills to put your first perk point in. I recommend putting your first one into stealth. This is because we're going to make use of the Raloff stealth trick now. If you sneak up behind Raloff and just continually attack him, it's really easy to level up your sneak skill here. Now that we've done this, we're going to exit the cave. If you listen to Raloff, he'll tell you to go and speak to Gerda in the town of Riverwood. This is just here on the map, but we're not going to go just there immediately. Instead, we're going to run down this path here just to the west, through these trees and then up over this hill. And I'll show you a secret location that's worth visiting. Now if you head just over this hill here and go directly ahead, you will reach this bandit camp. There are a few crafting materials worth picking up here like these flowers and mushrooms, and this chest that has a potion, a pair of boots, and this skill book which will level up your light armor skill. Make sure that you pick that up. Now let's unlock this chest. Be aware though that as soon as you loot this chest, you'll be attacked by three bandits just to the right through these trees. Quickly dispatch of those and loot their bodies. Some of them will be carrying hunting bows, which is an upgrade on the longbow that we find in Helgen. I'm also going to collect all this loot including this ring which is pretty nice. Now that we've done that we can turn around and head north back where we came from. But instead this time we'll run through this gap in the trees and follow the rock around to the left. I'm playing vanilla Skyrim here by the way. None of my mods are installed, not even the unofficial patch. I forget how bad some of the rock textures were in early Skyrim. 
Did you see that rock face glitch there just to the left? It's <laughs> so bad. Anyway, jump down here and we have our first taste of the Thalmor, murdering all these Talos worshippers at this shrine here. Quite a sad scene to find this, but this is the reason we're here though. This Thalmor agent always carries a random enchanted item and his Thalmor robes, which are worth a lot of gold. So collect those, plus these few coins on the rock here, and activate the shrine and it'll cure any diseases you may have picked up. And now we're going to head northeast along this road here and then just turn east up towards this bandit camp. It's worthwhile visiting this bandit camp and dispatching other bandits as one of them is always carrying treasure map 1, which is the first of 10 treasure maps across Skyrim. I'll show you where this is located very soon. Inside one of the bandit tents you'll also find these black mage robes, which have a fantastic value to weight ratio. And immediately opposite that tent to the north is another skill book, which will level up your one-handed skill if you didn't raw dog Raloff all the way to 100. Pick that up and keep heading north to the Guardian Stones. There are three here, each giving the player a 20% increase to all skills within either the Warrior, Mage or Thief skill groups. Choose whichever one you want to focus on. I activate the Mage Stone here. And now what you want to do is keep heading north just over the other side of the river to Anise's cabin. Here is Anise sat outside contemplating her existence. Her cabin is just here on the map. Now head immediately east and time for a bit more parkour over these rocks and you'll find this skeleton here, which contains a flawless emerald. Look at the value of this. Pretty nice guys. Now head back over the other side of the river into Embershard Mine. There are two reasons we're coming here. When inside, make sure you jump over this trip wire, otherwise it'll drop rocks on your head, which isn't what anyone wants really. More mushrooms for later, and now we're going to equip my bow here. Snipe these two bandits and collect the pickaxe from where they stood. This is reason one we are here. Use the pickaxe to mine all the iron ore in this location, it'll be worth it. Now towards the end of the mine is reason 2 we are here. This loot which includes 3 more gems, pretty nice. Now that we've entered this location you can head outside. On the map this is the location we've just cleared and now we can head up to Riverwood. The first thing we want to do here in Riverwood is find this wood elf, Feindel. He works the mill so he's usually be around this location. If you speak to him, you will have a dialogue option where you can ask him about someone called Sven. You'll learn that he and Sven are both interested in the same woman, Camilla. And he wants you to give her a letter and say it's from Sven. Dirty tactics, Feindel. Dirty tactics. Agree to do this. Before we go to Camilla though, we can first sell all the armour and spare weapons that we don't need to Alvor the blacksmith. And he's more than happy to take all our bloodstained bandit clothing. After we've made all his gold ours, Head inside the Riverwood Trader and give Camilla the letter saying it's from Sven. She will then refuse to speak to Sven anymore. So petty, it's brilliant. Now speak to her brother, the shopkeeper, and sell all your other stuff you don't need to him. The rings and jewels are a good place to start as these are worth a lot of gold. He will also give you a quest about retrieving his golden claw, but we will do that later. Now return to Feindel and tell him you've done his nefarious deed. And he'll become your friend now and give you a small amount of gold. Now comes the fun part. Ask him to follow you, and now he's our ally, we are able to ask him to train us in archery, which will cost gold. You should have made enough gold here to buy five levels, which is the max we can do per level. With all five levels done, we can now level up, which resets the training back to one. Except we don't have gold, right? Wrong. Ask Feindel to trade some things with you and just take all of your gold back, and now we can repeat step one again. And it's possible to keep doing this all the way to archery level 50, which is Feindel's training cap. So at this point, it's possible to have one-handed level 100, sneak 100, and archery 50 super early in the game, which is pretty nice. Now we've rinsed Feindel of all his gold, head west over the river and we'll find the location of treasure map 1, which is just inside this felled tree. Pick this treasure up and then finally head to Gerda in Riverwood. For some reason Gerda is quite content with some complete stranger asking to take some supplies, to which she gives you a key to her house. Okay then, take her valuable stuff including her engagement ring and wedding ring, which I think is random so these may not be here. And now we can head north to Whiterun which is the whole capital. The Jarl needs to pay the guards more than minimum wage clearly, as upon being stopped here a simple act of persuasion convinces the guards to let you in. You who's already killed about 15 Imperial soldiers. 32 bandits and somehow is carrying about 2 grand's worth of gold rings and jewels. Nothing to see here. Now we have made it into Whiterun and there is a ton of stuff for us to do here. 
first talk to the blacksmith, Adrian. Now a lot of the townsfolk will have random little quests for the player to do. They don't affect the storyline in any way, other than if you complete them, the people will react more favourably to the Dragonborn when they see them. If you ask Adrian about working the forge all day, she will ask you if you are able to take a sword she has made for the Jarl up to Dragon's Reach. We will be heading there anyway, so it's worth doing it at the same time. Now head inside the tavern opposite and behind the counter is this archery skill book. Pick that up and now we need to go up to Yorvaska and speak to Cod like White Mane. Request to join the companions and you will have to complete a basic task which involves sparring with one of the current members. After being accepted in, head back underneath and in one of the rooms towards the back, there are a few display cabinets, including this one which contains another archery skill book and an elven bow, a powerful bow to have early on. Unpick the lock if you want to steal it and read the book. Now head outside and up to the Skyforge. Here you'll find another skill book. This one improves your smithing skill. Now head across to the Hall of the Dead. Inside the crypts we can find yet another skill book. This one will improve your block skill. Now finally head up to Dragon's Reach. This is such a fantastic location in my opinion. After speaking to the Jarl and advising him of the dragon attack, go into the wizard's quarters to the right and here we will find an enchanting table. Here we can disenchant any enchanted gear we have, which will level up our enchanting skill and also mean we will learn those enchantments and be able to use them to enchant gear ourselves. Do this for any gear you don't wish to keep. I'm going to do most of this stuff except the novice robes and hood and also the ring of health as I'm wearing that. Now speak to Farangar. Sell him any stuff you don't need and ask him about being the only wizard in Whiterun. He will give us another small task to deliver some frost salts to the Whiterun alchemist. Before we go and do that, find Preventus and we can give him the sword we picked up earlier. This will earn us a few more gold coins, plus we'll make both Preventus and Adrian react favourably whenever they see the dragonborn. Now we can go to Arcadia the alchemist. Deliver the frost salts to her and she will give you a few potions. As I say, these little quests don't actually matter. But it's worthwhile doing them I think as you'll be visiting these locations anyway so may as well be efficient about it. Now use her alchemy table to craft a load of potions by mixing ingredients. Sell Arcadia all the battery acid that you've just concocted and head inside the inn. It's worthwhile talking to Holder here the innkeeper. She will have a load of dialogue options around rumours, looking for work and so on. Ask her them all. She can give the dragonborn a load of random quests and some of them we can do quite soon. Inside the inn or around Whiterun you'll also find this woman, Isolde. Ask her about becoming a merchant and she will tell you she is looking for a mammoth tusk. Say to her you will help her get one. This is a task that is very easy to do and we will get to it in a short while. Also speak to this woman in the inn, Carlotta, and she will say that the local bard, Mikhail, has been being a bit too forward in his advances. And that's one way of putting it I guess. I don't think it's as diplomatic as that. But anyway, us being the chivalrous type and all, say you'll speak to Mikhail, which translates as, I'm going to kick his silly bad arse. Make sure you only use fists though, and not a weapon, otherwise you will get thrown in jail. After giving Mikhail a bit of a beating, he will agree to leave Carlotta alone. Tell Carlotta you have dealt with Mikhail, and she will give you 250 gold. Good pay for throwing a few punches. Not content with kicking one bard's ass this evening, speak to this rather scary looking woman, Ulfgird. Challenge her to a bet, 100 gold in, winner takes all. Give her what for as well and take your winnings. And now that we've beaten up half of the pub, rent a room and go upstairs to sleep this crazy evening off. It is worthwhile sleeping in beds from time to time as you will gain a rested bonus which levels all skills faster, which I'll show here. There are three versions of this I think, Rested, Well Rested and Lover's Comfort, which give 5, 10 and 15% respectively. If you find this scruffy looking fellow, Brenuin, the local beggar, he will ask you to steal some Argonian Ale from the kitchen. Do this and he will give you quite a powerful potion. Finally find Amran, a local Redguard swordsman. He will tell you that some bandits have taken off with his father's sword and it's in some thief's lair somewhere. Say you will try and get this back for him. Now that we've done all that, we can begin on our quest outside of Whiterun. The first location we are heading to is Orphan Rock, here on the map. This is to pick up a dagger which is required to help cure the central tree in Whiterun, but there are also four witches here which we can kill and take their mage robes which are worth a lot of gold. Dispatch of those and then kill the Hargraven who will be carrying Nettlebane, the dagger we need. There is also a chest here with a random enchanted weapon, make sure you collect this and the rest of the treasure here. 
Now we can head northwest up to Bleak Falls Barrow. On the path up you will encounter these bandits here. Dispose of them and make sure you go to the top of the tower they were in as there is a chest up here with some minor loot in. Enter Bleak Falls Barrow and follow this through. It's quite a linear dungeon so you shouldn't have any trouble in it. The first dungeon puzzle you encounter is this one here. Through the door is a skill book and some more treasure. Fight this enormous spider a little further on and free Arvel the Swift from a gruesome death. His thanks to you is to run off, but don't worry about chasing him, he usually dies anyway. Just grab what loot you can from this room here, some of the urns will contain some stuff. Then continue through. We see Arvel accidentally step on a trap here, and that's the end of him, and now you will have your first encounter with the undead Draugr. Kill those and pick the golden claw off Arvel's corpse as we need this later. But don't step on the trap, this is what killed Arvel and it will kill you on higher difficulties. Carry on through the dungeon using this key. I remember when I first saw one of these doors how cool I thought they were, definitely helped build the suspense of what was to come. Eventually you'll reach the end of the dungeon. What an incredible location this is, they did a really good job on the design of this I think. If you go to the right you'll find a secret chest just behind the waterfall here. Unlock this for some more loot and then you can head back round and collect your first word of power. Dispatch of the boss Draugr and pick up the Dragonstone. When you exit Bleak Falls Barrow there is a potion just to the left here. Jump down the cliff edge and then head back to the Riverwood Trader. Here we can give Luke and his claw back, which he will be pretty pleased about. Sell a load of the stuff you don't want and now we are going to go west to this location here, Moss Mother Cavern. You'll find a Nord outside called Valder. Cure him of his injuries and offer to help him clear out the cave where his dead friends lie. And once complete he will give you a unique weapon, Valdir's Lucky Dagger. It's a good dagger early on, especially for a mage who just needs a secondary weapon. It's unique in that it has an enchantment, but it doesn't require charging with soul gems. Because it doesn't count as an enchantment, you can upgrade it using only the steel smithing perk at level 20, not the enchanted weapon perk which requires level 60. I recommend putting a point into steel smithing as we will upgrade this later on. Now we are going to head northeast to Redoran's retreat which is here on the map. Kill the bandit leader in here and you will find some random items inside the chest including treasure map 4. From here continue northeast to Silent Moon's camp. There are quite a few bandits here but you shouldn't have any problems dealing with them. After disposing of them head right to the top and inside you will find the Lunar Forge which contains two unique weapons, the Lunar Iron Sword and the Lunar Iron Mace. Then head inside the camp and in one of the rooms you'll find quite a few potions which are worth loads of gold and another enchanted axe. From Silent Moon's camp head directly east to Halted Stream Camp. This is an important location for a few reasons. Firstly at the end you'll find five mammoth tusks. Remember Isolde needed one in Whiterun. Collect all those as they are worth a lot of gold. If you're playing the Anniversary Edition there will also be a few backpacks in this drawer here which will increase your carrying capacity which is nice. The second main reason we are here is this spell book, Transmute Mineral Ore. Make sure you read this and also pick up these potions here. Raid the big chest behind you and then the third and final reason we are here is the Iron Ore. This location contains absolutely loads of it. Make sure you mine it all. It'll probably take about 15 minutes to get it all but it is worth it. Now for the spell we picked up. What this does is turn iron ore into silver ore and then silver ore into gold ore. Spam that until all your iron is gold. Now we continue east of Valheim Towers. Kill the bandits here and in the second tower you'll find an archery book, a chest with some random loot inside and finally a random enchanted bow at the very top. We aren't done just yet. Head southeast to this location Fort Amol. This location is overrun with mages so be careful, but inside the prison there there's a bucket towards the back with a lantern in it, just next to a bookcase. Remove the lantern and inside the bucket is a conjure bow spell. This is the best of the bound weapon spells and great for you mages and warriors alike. Now our last bandit camp is just here in the mounted range, opposite Whiterun. Head to the top of here and kill the bandit leader and he'll be carrying the iron hand gauntlets, great early on for any two handed warrior build. Now we've done all that, you should have a ton of completed quest markers inside Whiterun. This is the most efficient way of doing a lot of these early random quests, and you should now have a load of loot which we can sell. But before we head to Whiterun, go back to the standing stones and select the warrior stone if you don't already have it. This will allow us to level smithing 20% faster. Now head over to Whiterun. Using the smelter turn all our gold ore into gold ingots and now craft it into gold rings. 
which will level your smithing up quickly. You should reach level 30 if you have collected all the iron ore you come across, and I recommend putting a point into dwarven smithing. This is the best way of levelling smithing as the dwarven ruins contain so many crafting materials. Now you can upgrade Valdir's dagger as well using the smithing perk if you wish. Before we sell our mountain of loot, speak to the beggar and give him a gold coin. This will add 10 points into speechcraft which gives you better prices when selling. Now we can go about completing all the quests. Give Amran his sword back which will level up your one handed and block skill by one level each. Give the mammoth tusk to Yazolda which will level up your speechcraft by one level. Present the dagger Nettlebane to Danica in the temple to start the second part of the Elder Green quest. Collect any bounties from Preventus for some gold. And now finally go to Farangar and give him the Dragonstone to continue the main story. Disenchant any stuff you don't want to learn the enchantments and then we can talk to Jarl Balgruff. And now you're about to face your first dragon at the Watchtower outside Whiterun. After defeating the dragon make sure you pick up its scales and bones, really valuable stuff which you can turn into dragon armour at level 100 smithing. And after learning your first dragon shout go back to Farangar and buy the Muffle spell and the Soul Trap spell. These two spells will allow us to level Illusion and Conjuration really quickly. The Jarl will name you Thane of Whiterun and you'll get Lydia now to serve as your house Carl. Ask her to follow you. Now go speak to Preventus and we can buy our first house. If you're playing the Anniversary Edition you will have two options here, but other editions may only have one. Buy either, it doesn't really matter. I think I had about 12,000 gold by this point, so more than enough. Don't forget to decorate it though. You can furnish all of the rooms inside the house from Preventus. Visit your new home. Lydia will stay here with you as well. It's good getting a house this early on as it'll mean you have somewhere to store stuff you'd want to keep but not necessarily carry. And Whiterun is a good location as it's central to the Skyrim map. Now let's level up some more skills. Casting Soul Trap repeatedly on a dead body will level this skill really quickly. When your magicka is depleted, just wait one hour and repeat. It can be taken all the way to 100 this way. Make sure you equip the Mage Stone first though. Now cast Muffle the same way to level up your Illusion skill. And there you have it, my best start guide for new players. Let's recap what we've done. You have your first house in Whiterun, a solid follower in Lydia, a ton of gold, some unique and powerful weapons and spells early on, some skills max leveled, depending if you took these all the way or not, and we've barely left the comfort of Whiterun hold, instead focusing on a lot of the locations around the city. You should also have a ton of quests now to choose from. Where will your Skyrim journey take you? If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of my future Skyrim content. See you next time.